Okay, so today I'm going to show you something that I think may be interesting to you this time of year. It's October 4th, and we have wasps going everywhere, and they're in high competition for the last resources of the summer and autumn. So you may be thinking about trapping them and diverting them from your honeybees. Because if you'll notice in this trap, and I'll leave a link to this trap that I've chosen in the description of the video, but in this trap we don't just have nectar. Although there is apple juice in the bottom, there's a strip of bacon hanging down the middle. Now, one thing you'll notice you don't see in this trap, and that's honeybees. Honeybees don't care about animal protein. All of their protein comes from pollen from plants. So, in this trap, and this is a trap design that I've been using for several years, kind of has its drawbacks, but in my opinion, it's the best trap uh, that's out there and has worked the best for me. You can wash it out. Um, sometimes that seam, it's in two pieces and it's been glued together, that seam may leak a little, but this one is not leaking yet. But anyway, let's get on with uh, how the lure works. I don't buy the prepared lures that uh, the trap companies are selling. We just put apple juice in here and uh, then that strip of bacon satisfies their need for protein. So when these wasps fly by and smell that bacon, they go right in there. So it's a dual purpose trap because the, also those that are out seeking nectar will respond to that apple juice and they'll come into the trap also. I also recommend that you kind of leave some fluid in the bottom so that you can drown the wasps if you need to. Notice that there's a string going through the top and that was my wife's idea. She hung that bacon out there and uh, she's the one that uh, heated it up in the microwave for like 10 seconds or something just to get the aroma of that meat in the air but I don't think that's necessary because they are very sensitive and they're all flying in from downwind so they're definitely finding it that way and it's designed to suspend from an overhang or from a tree or something near your house you want to keep it away from where people are because you will be attracting wasps so notice that uh, they're coming in they're going after the bacon they go through these little conical shaped entry points there are four on the bottom and just two on top and uh, we strap this to a, it's the top of a suet feeder in my backyard, but uh, I strap it down instead of hanging it somewhere because I don't like them swinging all over the place. Now, you may notice that I'm holding a pipette here and I'm putting little drips next to it and there's a little wasp on the pipette after what I'm dripping there. And that is just the standard 50-50 sugar water that we uh, may often feed to bees if they're not producing enough on their own or if they need something during a dearth period. And the wasps are no different. They go after that same 50-50 sugar water. So why would I feed them? I mean, if I'm trying to trap them, why would I put out sugar water outside the trap? Well, because these wasps are social insects. And if we're just trapping them, they're going to fly in, be attracted to the apple juice or the bacon if they need the protein, and uh, they'll go in the trap and that's it. They're there. The rest of the wasps back in their nest have no clue where that wasp went and why it didn't return. So what I do is I add drips of sugar water, provide feed outside, let these wasps fill up on it. Then they'll fly back to their nest and communicate to the others that there's a resource of nectar, which is their carbohydrate. And other members of that nest will come out and uh, they'll also be attracted to this location. Then ultimately I just allow this supplemental feeding to dry up and what's left at the location, the trap. So then they'll all go in. So we wanna make sure that some feed and get away so that they can come back and bring others. So this is the trap and this is them drinking sugar water and there's almost nothing else really to talk about other than what does a wasp do with the protein that it gets? So often some of the larger wasps especially will kill our honeybees and they'll take the thorax from that honeybee and they'll bundle it up and make a little protein pellet. They take it back to their nest, they feed it to the developing larvae and in return the larvae oozes out a carbohydrate nectar type fluid that the workers also eat. So there's a reward system. This encourages the wasps to go out kill small animals, tear off bits of protein, and fly it back home and feed the larvae. The larvae that are developing this time of year, when they are capped up, ultimately will 
likely become queens, and those are the ones that will seek hiding places through winter, and in the spring, each of those queens will be starting its own nest. So it's kind of important to go ahead and knock these out of the ballpark this time of year because the impact on that colony and how many colonies you'll have next year is uh, much more potent. So that's about all I have to say. Again, I'm going to put a link to this uh, wasp trap in the description of the video, and I'm just going to let you watch these things uh, drink sugar water and let you marvel at the design of these wasps. Thank you for watching as always, and I hope you subscribe. In an upcoming video, I will be comparing the um, industrial pheromone lures for these wasp traps, and we'll just see if they're better than this. I don't think they are, but uh, we'll see if they're better than this, and also a comparison of the two top rated ones. Thanks for watching. Mm-hmm. <laughs>